in the previous videos we talked about dna as genetic material proving experiments we discussed the experiment done by griffith and then by hershey and chase now here we are going to compare rna and dna and then ultimately it will uh, take us to that conclusion that why dna is the genetic material so it is dna versus rna that we are talking about and we'll compare these two molecules on the basis of certain criteria or characteristics which are important for any molecule to be considered as genetic material so let us first talk about point that is mutation and here uh, let us say we divide we write about dna in this segment and RNA in this segment so that we are able to compare. So first point on which we want to compare these two is mutation. When we discuss that for a molecule to be termed as genetic material, it should show certain properties and those properties included mutation. We said that the mutations should be stable and inheritable. DNA also undergoes mutation and RNA also undergoes mutation. So here both of them are at the same level. The second point is stability. The molecule which has to be get inherited should be a stable molecule. DNA has one OH that is functional group. RNA has two OH that is functional groups. More the number of functional groups, more reactive that molecule is. So on this basis, DNA appears to be more stable as compared to RNA. Second point is, in DNA, the nitrogen bases are ATCG. T, that is thiamine, is considered as a stable base. And in case of RNA, T gets replaced by U, that is uracil. Uracil is considered as unstable, unstable base. And the reason why it is considered as unstable base is cytosine by deamination, by deamination changes into uracil. And that means if this deamination reaction takes place, which is a very common reaction, then cytosin can get converted into uracil. And if that happens, that would result into unwanted mutations or changes. So two reasons. One, there are two functional groups and instead of thiamine, which is a stable base, RNA has uracil. So we can conclude that DNA on the basis of stability, DNA is stable and RNA, we cannot call it unstable, but it is comparatively less stable. Now here, at this point, DNA looks like a more uh, promising molecule for uh, the genetic material. Third point on which we want to compare it is expression expression of the information expression of the information that it has information is present on dna and that information goes from dna to mrna and from mrna to protein synthesis this particular method of expression that is from dna to protein is known as central dogma and this concept was given by Crick. So this is how the proteins are synthesized from the information which is present on DNA. DNA first undergoes transcription. So the process which takes place here is known as transcription and from mRNA, the protein synthesis, this process is known as translation. So, the information which is present on DNA is interpreted or translated in two steps. First, from DNA, mRNA has to get 
get synthesized and we know it is not directly mRNA. It is going to be hRNA, then it undergoes splicing, there, capping and tailing. That is when we get mRNA and then protein synthesis. What about RNA? RNA, this is uh, the third point that we are talking of. In this case, RNA directly gives proteins. But when RNA is the genetic material, we know certain viruses in which RNA is the genetic material. Then the expression is RNA has to first synthesize DNA. This DNA forms mRNA and from mRNA to protein synthesis. The conversion or from DNA to mRNA formation process we call transcription. Here it is going in the reverse direction. So this process is known as reverse transcription. This process remains same that is transcription and mRNA to protein is same translation. So we say that RNAs help in protein synthesis. mRNA brings the message, tRNA brings the amino acids and rRNA helps in protein synthesis. So RNA basically help in protein synthesis. But if we are talking of RNA as the genetic material, then RNA directly does not produce the protein. It goes by an additional step which is known as reverse transcription. Now, these are three points on which we have compared DNA and RNA. Let us add one more point. Let us add it here as we have little space and that is on the basis of replication. DNA also replicates on its own and RNA can also replicate. So these are the two points that is mutation and replication. Uh, let us do it this way. Let us change the number three and let this be the fourth one. So on the basis of mutation and replication, DNA and RNA, they show both the same properties. Stability wise, DNA is more stable due to presence of only one functional group and thiamine as one of the bases. RNA is comparatively less stable because it has two functional groups, two functional groups and uracil in present instead of thiamine. Uracil by a simple reaction of deamination is formed from cytosine. So if there is cytosine, it can change into uracil. That means there can be random mutations which can take this. So it is comparatively less stable. Then the expression of information which these molecules have, DNA translates its information in two steps from DNA to mRNA by transcription and then by translation proteins are synthesized and these proteins will execute the job. This expression is known as central dogma which was given by Crick. RNA, if it is simple RNA and if we are talking about its function in our body, then they help in protein synthesis. But if that RNA is the genetic material and if it has to translate or express that information which it has, it has to undergo one additional step that is from RNA to DNA. It is known as reverse transcription. There is a special enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Then mRNA from this DNA which is the normal case and then protein synthesis. So if we compare these two we can easily conclude that more stable molecule which is able to express its information in an easier manner should be the genetic material. So this is a comparative thing between these two molecules and with the help of the experiments done by Griffith and Hershey and Chase we have anyways reached to that conclusion and by the properties also we can say and confirm that DNA is the genetic material as it is more stable but RNA is genetic material in certain organisms we have written those examples like TMP and all 
they follow this method of expression. So DNA finally concluded as the genetic.